This video is a buster call. To find out more about how you can get me to do a personalized video on a topic of your choosing, head over to patreon.com slash grandlinereview and scroll down to the Admiral tier. But for now, enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today, we are going to be focusing on one of my favourite characters in the series, Roronoa Zoro, or more specifically, on the phenomenal battles that he has been involved in over the course of the series. As an unapologetic Zoro fanboy, these portions of One Piece never fail to captivate me, so here we are. The criteria for this list is simple as. A fight is defined as an exchange of attacks between two or more individuals, one of which in this case must be Zoro. However, all fights on this list must also be canon, due to top secret reasons, to do with national security. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top 10 Zoro fights in One Piece. Number 10. Zoro vs. Ohm. We are going to commence proceedings in the realm of the sky against a breeder by the name of Ohm. During NL's death game, Zoro became caught in Ohm's ordeal of iron, the survival rate of which was 0%. And initially, this was quite a tough match for the Straw Hat Swordsman, because he had to contend with the iron traps laid all around the battlefield, as well as Ohm's gigantic fighting dog, Holy. Furthermore, after dealing with those, Zoro had to very quickly adapt to Ohm's Sky Sword, as well as his advanced use of observation Haki, in a time long before the Straw Hats had any comprehension of Haki whatsoever. Although in the end, none of that really mattered, as Zoro simply took Ohm's attack head on with his 108 pound cannon, negating the Sky Breeder's strike and proceeding to defeat him in a single slash, which is a classic Zoro motif in battle. Lose during the beginning, lose in the middle, and triumphantly overcome an opponent right at the end. Number nine. Zoro versus Hachan. Here we have what I would call another type of very typical Zoro fight, whereby he enters the fray heavily wounded and at a statistical disadvantage. In this case, that statistic was the number of swords being used against him, which totaled six, due to Hachan being a proponent of Rokutoyu. On top of that, Zoro also had the handicap of only possessing one sword and having to improvise by using the blades of Johnny and Yosaku. Despite that, this match belonged to Zoro from start to finish, putting his mastery of swordsmanship on full display, but more importantly than that, this conflict reaffirmed Zoro's commitment to becoming the world's greatest swordsman. Plus, this was the first time we got to see Zoro use a Tatsumaki attack, which to this day is one of my absolute favourite moves in the series. And finally, the fight is also very nicely framed by the general atmosphere of the Arlong arc, making Zoro's struggle and victory all the more meaningful. Number 8. Zoro vs. Hody Jones. And in another stunning display of pure dominance, we have the short-lived conflict against the primary antagonist of Fishman Island, Hody Jones. Now, as the unofficial, but as we all know is true, first mate of the Straw Hats, from time to time, Zoro has the honor of taking on opponents that are generally reserved for Luffy. However, in these cases, you don't generally expect Zoro to win. And here, he essentially did just that. After deciding to submerge himself in water to take on the boss Fishman, Zoro got the better of Hody in a single slash and threatened to end the entire Fishman Island arc right then there. However, given that there was still more story to tell, Oda had to step in and tell Zoro to calm down, allowing Hody to cause more terror and eventually go on to be defeated by Luffy. But we will never forget that Zoro did it first. Number 7. Zoro vs 100 Baroque Works Agents. After many of the Straw Hats had been drawn in by a clever ruse on the island of Whiskey Peak, Zoro proceeded to initiate a Kill Bill style takedown of 100 bounty hunters, including prominent Baroque Works members such as Miss Monday and Igaran. This was a very unique battle in the series because it's so rare that we see power displayed through sheer numbers. Usually this group of bounty hunters would be what we'd refer to as fodder villains, but in this case they caused Zoro a ton of trouble, and it was far from an easy victory for the swordsman. I mean a comfortable victory perhaps, but not easy, and what also contributed to this was the fact that this was the first real test for Zoro's new swords at the time, Yubashiri and the Sandai Kitetsu, the latter of which Zoro discovered was a problem child. So it's like purposely putting yourself on a handicap. But that's precisely what makes this battle so entertaining. Seeing Zoro with perfect mastery defeating a bunch of bounty hunters wouldn't be any fun at all, but seeing him doing it whilst trying to maintain control of his own blades is just fascinating and really cool. Plus this battle takes place at night, and I'm a huge fan of anything that happens in the evening, because it really amps up the atmosphere. All in all, a brilliant Zoro fight. Number 6. Zoro vs T-Bone. Speaking of fights that take place at night, here is another. Although this conflict against T-Bone has an added layer of time limit in order to add further excitement. You see, the ever-honourable T-Bone was standing on the tracks of the sea train in order to prevent the Straw Hats from proceeding to any slobby. And well, that's just not cool, T-Bone. Not cool at all. In response, the Straw Hats dispatched their resident demon to deal with him and clear the way, resulting in one of the fastest yet extraordinarily memorable fights in the series. It only consisted of a handful of actions, but with this sequence, I would like to give huge props to the anime, who did this sequence a whole world of justice, taking the 
utmost of care with every action performed and elevating it into a truly memorable Zoro fight. Number 5. Zoro vs Kaku Stepping straight off the sea train and into any slobby, we have the first example of a fight on this list that actually pushed Zoro to his limits. As a member of CP9 and as a proponent of Four Sword style, Kaku represented a very worthy opponent, demanding everything that Zoro had available to him at the time to overcome. For the most part, this fight is brilliantly choreographed, yes, even after Kaku turns into a giraffe, which is ridiculous because who would have thought that a giraffe swordsman would look so sleek? But what this conflict really highlights is that Zoro is at his best when he is met blow for blow and forced to innovate and evolve himself, which he did rather shockingly in this case, by growing two extra heads, four extra arms, and six extra swords. I, uh, yeah, still don't really know what to make of Ashura, but it certainly did cap off quite an amazing battle with pure demonic style. Number 4. Zoro vs Pika In this unique contest, Zoro took on his largest opponent to date, not counting Oz I guess, but unlike a lot of Zoro action sequences, this focused a lot more on thought and strategy as opposed to power and endurance. I mean, Pika was never really a true threat to Zoro, in fact he was more like a colony of insects, that no matter how many you spray, you simply cannot rid your home of them. This fight required Zoro to observe, analyse and counter Pika's abilities, and he performed that role to perfection, eventually luring out the stone insect king and defeating him with quite a classic attack actually. 3,000 worlds. And that's almost the most satisfying part of this entire engagement. Despite having been shown in the series way back in the Baratier arc, 3,000 worlds had never been used to defeat an opponent before now, so it was fantastic to see it finally achieve its intended purpose in this brilliant bout. Number 3. Zoro vs Bartholomew Kuma Here we have what is certainly the most unconventional fight on this list today, as Zoro took it upon himself to confront one of the seven warlords of the sea in a desperate situation after the crew had been devastated by the aforementioned warlords Ursa Shock. And to put it simply, Kuma was not an opponent who Zoro had it in him to defeat at the time. However, that did not stop him from performing a superb Shishi Sonson that brought on the dramatic revelation that Kuma was in fact a cyborg. However, by far the greatest aspect of this engagement was when Kuma offered a change in terms by absorbing all of Luffy's pain and fatigue, and not only did this result in one of the finest Zoro moments of all time in regards to nothing happened, but it showed us as readers and watchers just how disgustingly durable the Straw Hat Swordsman is, pushing him to a limit that we had never seen before or since. Number 2. Zoro vs Mihawk this fight stands out greatly as the only loss on this list for Zoro, not only a loss actually, but a complete defeat in every way possible, and one that was very necessary for Zoro's character going forward. This battle is what gave Zoro, and I suppose the audience, a benchmark for exactly how far he and the rest of the Straw Hats had to go in order to achieve their dreams. And even though Zoro was dominated the entire way, it was still quite a spectacle to read and watch, as this fight gradually becomes less about actually winning, and more about Zoro simply proving himself to be a worthy swordsman, which he does by eventually earning Mihawk's respect. And as a reward we get the tiniest of glimpses of what power is like at the very top of this world as Mihawk elects to finish Zoro using his prized blade, Yoru. And I mean just everything about this battle made the world feel so much bigger, which is a fantastic achievement for what is essentially just an action sequence. Furthermore, it also really came to define Zoro as a character, vowing never to lose again and carrying a scar that will forever remind us of this encounter. Number 1. Zoro vs Daz Bones Now Daz Bones isn't a particularly important figure in the series, but what he represents to Zoro in this battle is one of the greatest character defining moments in the series. Due to the power of the Super Super no Mi, Zoro as a swordsman was up against a hard counter, something seemingly impossible to overcome that we as readers and watchers could not help but be compelled to witness Zoro's struggle to push beyond the limits of a regular swordsman. And what a struggle it was, in fact in my opinion this is still Zoro's hardest fought battle to this day, with him being completely decimated for a good 99% of it. But on the brink of death is exactly where Zoro would find his answer, achieving a very enlightened sense of the world around him, and as a result the ability to cut or not to cut whatever he saw fit. And with this, it was over. One strike in this enlightened state was all it took to bring down Dust Bones, and it was incredibly satisfying to see after enduring all that had happened to Zoro during the fight. This conflict in general is also one of the most well choreographed in the entire series, featuring stunning imagery that had me hooked from beginning to end. A swordsman up against an insurmountable task and pushing through it regardless. To me, this is the defining Zoro fight. 
But that pretty much does it for the top 10 best Zoro fights in the series. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite Zoro fights. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.